Attention Skill Capped subscribers, we just got off the phone with the president and he told us some awful news. There has been a massive crash in arena ratings in Wrath Classic, but luckily we know the cause. It's those goddamn death knights. They're everywhere and they're terrorizing the ladder. These desperate times call for desperate measures and we're gonna do something we've never done before. Normally, this video would be exclusive to skillcap.com, but this time we're giving away a website guide for free. So don't worry, because we will show you how to avoid dying to DKs and how to exploit their weaknesses with the goal of restabilizing the arena ladder. It's up to you, fellow arena masters. Can you defend Azeroth from their terror? <clears throat> Alright, enough roleplay. Let's start off by going over how DKs set up their kills so you know what you're up against defensively. One thing we will be repeating throughout this video is that unholy DKs are a spec that snowballs super hard, which means their pressure builds slowly, then ramps up dramatically as time goes on. While some DKs seem to run on top of you and pop every CD, the best Death Knights will actually set up a lot of their damage, looking to gradually build enough momentum before blowing all of their cooldowns, and this is where you really run into trouble. In any case, this snowball of damage starts by applying diseases. There are two main diseases, Blood Plague and Frost Fever, which are applied through different DK spells. Both of these can normally be dispelled by any class with a disease dispel mechanic. However, a passive talent called Unholy Blight will periodically provide total dispel protection for these debuffs. Unholy Blight will trigger whenever Death Coil deals damage onto its target, which means absorbing the damage with a shield will prevent this proc from occurring, which makes mechanics like Sacred Shield, Ice Barrier, and Power Ward Shield passively effective at reducing damage, especially when combined with disease dispels. If the DK is spreading diseases on multiple players, then Prayer of Mending becomes insanely efficient at dealing with their AoE damage. And while none of their disease damage is lethal, it is the first step in a DK snowballing their pressure. Once the ball starts rolling with diseases, Death Death Coil will be a huge source of pressure, not just for the amount of actual damage it does, but also for its role in refreshing Unholy Blight. The main thing to be aware of is that Death Coil means DKs have some ranged pressure, and you cannot simply rely on being away from them to completely avoid their rot. And speaking of which, simply getting away from a DK can be a remarkably difficult task. They come equipped with two of the strongest snares in the game, being Chains of Ice and Desecration. Chains of Ice is a more powerful slow, but it's a bit easier to play around since the magic debuff can be dispelled, while Desecration's effect is AoE, meaning it can continuously snare enemy targets even through pillars. In either case, the best workaround to these snares is a freedom type effect, which includes, you guessed it, Hand of Freedom, Master's Call, and to some degree, Spirit Walk. Ironically, Desecration can be countered by other DKs since the debuff itself is physical, but also magic in nature, allowing AMS to prevent the snare effect from triggering. Even if you have a workaround to their slows and snares, the next thing to consider is Death Grip. The best DKs will use this spell as a reaction to enemy mobility. This means instead of death gripping a mage at a random time, better DKs might wait until the mage has used Blink in order to close the gap with Grip. The same basic logic applies to other gap creators like Disengage or Thunderstorm to name a few spells. What this means is you should avoid using any of your major gap creators until the DK is committed to using Death Grip, otherwise you will be stuck tanking damage for quite a while. So now we have two parts of the DK damage snowball, diseases and slows. Now it's time to add a third component, lockdown. This is where we will find their three forms of micro CC. Gnaw, Strangulate, and Mind Freeze. Combined with their diseases and snares, this is how DKs maintain their constant pressure. Strangulate and Gnaw are direct forms of lockdown that are often, but not always, chained together. Gnaw is actually a pet ability and stuns the target for 3 seconds, which of course can be removed with any stun break effect or reduced with some select passives. Strangulate, on the other hand, is a 5 second blanket silence that is a magical debuff, meaning it can be both dispelled and even reduced by some other class specific passives, but not removed with a PvP trinket. The important thing to remember is that if both spells are ready, some form of counterplay is likely needed. The last form of consistent lockdown in the DK toolkit is their interrupt. While we could talk about the mechanics of juking Mind Freeze, the more important thing to think about is how it can be chained together with both Strangulate and Gnaw. If the kill target is a healer or a caster DPS, Mind Freeze can be used as a combo starter by chaining the interrupt lockout with a Strangulate and Gnaw. On the flip side, it might be available when the Stun Silence combo ends with the threat of an interrupt continuing the pressure. Otherwise, Mind Freeze might be used on off targets to prevent peels through casted CC or to lock out healers. This means that even if you aren't being attacked by DK, you should always be mindful of their semi-ranged interrupt. Okay, so now we finally have three parts of the DK damage snowball, and it's time to add our final ingredient, cooldowns. 
If you watched our video on the most broken wrath abilities, you already know one of these is Gargoyle. Let's take a moment to review some of the things we learned in that video. For one, it is a long CD bursting tool that summons a gargoyle who flies in the air and chain casts an ability called Gargoyle Strike for 30 seconds. The damage dealt by Gargoyle is quite high, especially since it can be buffed by things like Bloodlust and have its damage snapshotted by the DK stats, meaning a trinket proc can make the gargoyle hit harder. Because it is an undead and because it chain casts a single spell, that means it has very few specific forms of counterplay. For one, both Turn Evil and Shackle Undead can be used to CC it, especially with their empowered glyph effects. Also, since Gargoyle Strike is a cast, that means that it can be line of sighted, which is much easier to do when Gargoyle itself is snared. On top of this, the cast can be interrupted, which is quite important to do since the repeated Gargoyle Strikes can be overwhelming. And while it might not be a common meta strategy in the early expansion, the Gargoyle can actually be killed. This will be easier to do in the late expansion when damage scaling outpaces its max HP. Finally, we have one more spell integral to DK Burst, Corpse Explosion. This is another ability tied to the DK's ghoul, and when used, will cause the pet to stop moving in order to channel a spell called Corpse Explosion that will result in massive AoE damage to all targets within 5 yards of the ghoul. Since it has a limited range, this means it will often be comboed with stuns, including gnaw from the ghoul itself, but also with external stuns like Hammer of Justice. But because the spell needs to be cast, it means that it is vulnerable to interrupts and knockbacks, as well as having the W key as a possible counter. Yes, in some ways it is possible to simply walk away from corpse explosion damage. While its damage can be lethal against any class, this spell is even good into more bulky classes like arms warriors, elemental shamans, or even other DKs. And now we have the complete DK damage snowball. It starts by applying diseases and covering them with unholy blight. While this is happening, they will be preventing your movement, which eventually gets chained together with lockdown and burst, resulting in a deadly kill setup. One thing that we have yet to touch on, but is related to their damage output as a whole, are their trinket procs. In Season 5, this will commonly include Dark Moon Card Greatness, or Anvil of Titans, with the possibility of human DKs having both active at the same time. These trinket procs increase all of their damage, but as mentioned, will also modify the damage of their pets, including Gargoyle. Being aware of when these buffs are active can make you more prepared for their massive waves of damage. And before we recap, we should add that the damage of their ghoul is quite high. With that said, it is unlike Hunter or Warlock pets in regards to being a kill target. While it can be killed, the DK can summon it instantly on a relatively low cooldown, meaning training the ghoul can easily become wasted damage. Anyway, let's recap with the best things you can do to avoid dying to DKs. Above all, remember that their damage snowballs with runic power as their momentum. Once the DK is able to generate resources, it means they are able to get their combo started, but this requires a few seconds to set up. This also means that mobility and distance are one of your best tools for avoiding a lot of their damage. Outside of Death Grip, DKs don't have any reliable gap closers and lack powerful mobility cooldowns like other classes. So if you can avoid Death Grip with range or Chains of Ice and Desecration with Dispels and Freedom effects, you can prevent the DK to do any meaningful pressure. After this, you should actively look for counterplay to both their Lockdown and Burst. Remember that Strangulate cannot be trinketed, but can be dispelled by Priests, Paladins, or even Warlock Fell Hunters and can be potentially potentially immune with Grounding Totem. While Gnaw might only be a 3 second stun, it can be lethal when combined with the lockdown of Strangulate or other external CCs. Then remember to deploy one of the many counterplays for Summon Gargoyle using Line of Sight and Interrupts when possible, and even using CC, especially Turn Evil and Shackle Undead, to momentarily control it while you duck for cover. Next up, we're going to talk about how to actually kill DKs, which of course is the fun part. But before we do, this is just a sample of our Knowing Your Enemy course available exclusively at SkillCap.com. There you will find similar guides for countering other meta specs, ensuring you know the best ways to adapt in Arena. In these videos, we show you how to play around the pressure of the most dominant classes, and then teach you how you can exploit their weaknesses, giving you the knowledge to outsmart your opponents. In fact, all of our videos are designed to put you ahead of the competition quickly, including our class courses, which teach you the damage and playstyle of pro players, and our growing library of Arena commentaries, where you can learn the winning strategies for all of your toughest matchups. If all this sounds interesting to you, visit the discount link below for an exclusive offer and learn more about our 400 rating gain guarantee. Anyway, back to the video. Now that we know about DK win conditions, it's time to cover how to kill them. This starts with one huge problem, unfortunately, and that is that DKs have a bunch of ways to not die. This includes their passive bulkiness due to high stamina, armor, and resilience values, but also with the combination of their multiple defensives, including anti-magic shell, anti-magic zone, icebound fortitude, death pact, lichborn, and to some degree bone shield. Well, isn't that just lovely? 
No worries though, we will break all of these down one by one. First up, AMS and AMZ. Since Anti-Magic Shell has a shorter cooldown, let's roll with it first. It works remarkably similar to its retail version, providing a huge chunk of magic damage mitigation, while also preventing the application of freshly casted magic debuffs. And with the magic suppression talent, AMS is even stronger than the tooltip suggests. But perhaps most important of all is that Anti-Magic Shell will cause absorb damage to generate runic power. And I want you to remember that because it matters a whole lot more than you think. DKs also have Anti-Magic Zone, which will provide massive damage reduction to magic spells in an AoE effect at the DK's current location, but unlike AMS, it won't make the DK immune to new magical debuffs. Since both of these provide relatively high magical damage mitigation, it is very unlikely that you will be able to damage through them with spells alone. This is especially true with AMS, which pretty much provides total magical damage immunity for its duration. With that said, DKs are still susceptible to offensive dispels while these effects are active, so if you play something with a purge effect, then look to remove important buffs during this time where you otherwise won't be doing damage. And remember, damaging into AMS will feed the DK runic power, which will in turn provide them with even more damage and survivability. AMZ can be damaged through for kills, though that assumes the DK or their partner is already low on HP and you have a ton of burst ready. Fortunately, since AMZ is an AoE effect, it means that there are some unique forms of counterplay, including knocking enemy targets out of its radius, or using an AoE fear to run them out of its effect, or simply rooting the DK to prevent them from dropping it on their partners if they are the kill target. Unlike retail, Wrath AMZ needs to be planted at the DK's feet and cannot be used on locations away from them. In any case, even if you don't have one of these effects personally, chances are someone on your team does. Next up, we have Icebound Fortitude. Just like the retail version, it will provide damage reduction and stun immunity while active, but unlike retail, it cannot be used while stunned. And with a 20 runic resource requirement, that means it will have to be used preemptively. But even when stunned, DKs have reduced overall stun durations thanks to a passive called On a Pale Horse. In any case, you should never stun into IBF, which can easily be tracked with an add-on if needed. Like many other DK defensives, this has two very specific forms of counterplay, which we will get into in a bit. Next up, we have Death Pact, which comes with a relatively high runic power requirement, but will sacrifice the DK's ghoul for a quick burst heal, which can be reduced by MS effects. Also adding to their self-healing is Lichborn. On its surface, this cooldown alone doesn't seem to be a major defensive. It does provide some CC immunity since it categorizes the DK as undead, which makes them immune to some forms of CC, including Sap, Polymorph, Hex, and Fear, but vulnerable to turn evil and shackle undead. The real reason why Lichborn is technically a defensive cooldown is because it allows the DK to heal themselves with Death Coil, and when combined with Death Strike, means the DK will have some on-demand forms of self-healing. Note that Death Strike's healing scales off of how many diseases are on the target, so you could potentially reduce it by dispelling dots, assuming Unholy Blight is not active. And as we mentioned previously, DKs also have Bone Shield, which isn't something you will actively play around, but can simply make them bulkier into swaps, as it reduces damage from a few attacks. Alright, as we promised, there are two major forms of counterplay for each of their defensives. In varying order of importance, AMS, AMZ, and IBF cannot be used while silenced, and neither can their Mind Freeze or Strangulate, which aren't technically defensive cooldowns, but certainly can be used defensively to stop important casts. This simply means that silencing DKs is an effective way to take them down, as it locks them out from using any major abilities. Another similarity between some of the DK's defensive cooldowns is that they all have resource requirements either costing runic power or runes themselves, which is why we keep emphasizing that DK's are a snowball class. If you allow them to generate runic power, that activates a huge section of their offensive and defensive toolkit. If a DK has little to no runic power in the middle of the game and doesn't have a trinket ready, it means they might be super vulnerable to burst damage since they won't be able to use many major CDs. This also means not allowing the DK to get momentum started can deny a lot of their defensives. Sometimes the best way to play against DKs, especially in 2v2, is to be hyper aggressive with stuns and silences. This is a bit comp specific, but is something you might discover in our arena commentaries over at Skill skillcap.com. Keeping the DK immobile can also remove some of their defensive toolkit, as it will make it harder for them to generate runic power, use death strike, and even plant AMZ in the intended location. Because of their wide array of defensives, DKs are not the best targets to kill with brute force alone. It is often better to have intention behind your kill setups, combining stuns and blanket silences to chain together unavoidable CC while preventing them from using their defensives in the first place. Of course, the DK could use any one of their major defensives aggressively, which you can look to punish later on. But as a general rule of thumb, don't look to kill DKs randomly. If you don't have a healing reduction or silence effect on your team, don't invest a lot of time killing DKs unless they are reckless with their CDs. 
Now it's finally time to cover some micro interactions with DKs. Some of these will be class specific, others will be general. In any case, this will all be useful information to know. First up, Lichborn. As we mentioned in our section on defensives, this ability will turn the DK into an undead and while active will make them immune to polymorph, sap, hex, seduce, and mind control, since these only work on humanoids and fear effects since they cannot be used on undead. It can also be used to break the DK out of fear, charm, and mind control, but not the other abilities we mentioned. Fortunately, because the DK is technically undead during Lichborn, it means they are vulnerable to both turn evil and shackle undead, and with the popularity of paladins and priests, this is a highly pervasive form of counterplay. Speaking of counterplay, we've already touched on the effectiveness of silence against unholy DKs, but they are also quite vulnerable to disarms. This is because they usually do not play with a weapon chain and do not have passive forms of disarm reduction, which means rogues, warriors, hunters, and shadow priests can look to disarm DKs for their full duration unless removed by other means. With this in mind, DKs can still use some damaging abilities while disarmed, including death coil, icy touch, and blood boil, so they are still able to pump out some DPS, though it will overall be lower. And as promised, we have one super weird class specific spell interaction which is important to know, even if it doesn't apply to you. This is for all the hunters out there and is related to deterrence. Obviously, disease damage will continue to tick through this CD, but what might be less obvious is DKs can still use Rune Strike into debt while it is active, since it cannot be parried. Even though it isn't an amazing source of damage, it is still useful to know if you are a hunter or if one is on your team. And to wrap things up with some additional DK knowledge, you should familiarize yourself with their presences. Much like warrior stances, these can affect their combat in various ways. The important ones to be aware of are Unholy and Frost Presence. Unholy is their damage stance, which uniquely provides them with a lower global cooldown. Frost Presence is their defensive stance, which gives them damage reduction and a small boost to stamina. You can sort of think of this like a warrior equipping a sword and shield. It reduces their damage to the point where it punishes them for camping it and is mostly used as a last resort. Overall, the most important thing to remember when fighting unholy DKs is that they rely heavily on momentum to activate their full toolkit. This is why, throughout this course, we've been referring to them as a snowball spec. This means that the best way to play against them is preventing them from ever gaining momentum, which includes doing things like rooting and kiting to prevent uptime and then abusing silence mechanics to deny key defensives. Many of the ways in which you counter DKs is built around preemptive gameplay, which helps explain why they can be so frustrating to deal with as a retail player. Unlike Shadowlands, where you have enough tools to make one-to-one -to -one trades into DKs, Wrath of the Lich King has limited cooldown trading options, and Unholy DKs simply have more individual cooldowns compared to any other DPS spec. And that is not even considering that the healer they are often paired with, Holy Paladin of course, also has a considerable amount of defensive cooldowns as well, meaning DK teams are usually over-budgeted with defensive options. In any case, the best way to play around DKs is to never let them snowball momentum. By limiting their uptime and utilizing smart and effective CC, you can potentially counter them in every game state. And if you're wanting to learn how your spec specifically interacts with DKs, our class courses teach you all the important interactions between classes. Again though, this guide is just one part of our Knowing Your Enemy series where you can learn more about how to counter the most oppressive classes in Wrath of the Lich King. There is a reason why Skillcapped has proven time after time to work, because it is designed to put you ahead of the competition, and with a money back guarantee, you have absolutely nothing to lose. Click the link below to learn how you can gain at least 400 rating this season and get started today at Skillcap.com. Anyway guys, we hope you enjoyed this one. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and tell us if you would like a similar guide but focused on countering a 2v2 or a 3v3 comp in Wrath Classic. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.